Um, all right, so I'm Nick. Um, I'm a new route setter here at DBC. <clears throat> I've been interning with uh, Ty and TJ for about a year. The process is kind of, um, when I come in at the beginning of the night, I have no idea what I'm gonna set. So I come in and TJ will tell me kind of like what color and what lane I'm gonna set in and what grade, about what grade we want it to be. And that's kind of what gets the wheels turning for me. And I'll come back here to our holds room and look around and find holds that feel inspiring to me for that for that particular set. I'll kind of create them up, take them outside, and, and see when the magic hits and what happens then. All right, so I'm going to set a, a blue M plus. Kind of starts with this this short prow. Um, maybe some get some like compression out of that. Um, and then right here at the nose, I'm going to head right. We'll see what kind of interesting sequences we can get out of that. Let's go back to the back and pick up some holes. Awesome. I'm trying to think about holds for the first section that are um, good for the grade at compression on that prowl. Um, so things that don't have like a particularly positive lip on them. All right, so I've just wrapped up my hold selection process. I tend to like to try to grab a really wide variety of holds to take out to the wall. Um, so I've got some pretty big holds, some really small holds, a wide selection of like in-cut crimpy kind of thing since it's a, a slightly overhung face that I'm setting on. Um, we'll see We'll see what takes shape when we get them out there. Let's go give them a shot. Awesome. <laughs> this is another thing I do every night. Lose your water bottle? Lose my water bottle, yeah. <laughs> you found the water bottle. Got it. Ooh. It's always nearby. Cool, so I'll um, kind of weigh out all my holes just so I can kind of like visually stay organized and, and know what I'm looking at and what I have to work with. My favorite part of route setting is uh, finding the right size bolt for each hold. Mm -hmm. If you look at a bolt outside of a hold, the threads only come to a certain point and if if this end of the bolt protrudes too far from the back of the hold, you're going to ruin your T-nuts mm -hmm. um, in the wall. So you've got to find the right length bolt, the perfect length bolt for every hold. And you're, uh, you must have gotten pretty good at this at this point. I'm definitely faster than I was in the beginning, but I think sometimes compared to you know route setting veterans, <laughs> it's, it's amazing how quickly they do it. To change out those holds. So the this one I, I went I went with just kind of has like a better angle <laughs> from that arete. Uh huh. Um, to kind of work on um, some like compression and like ambient mm -hmm. match there. Oh, cool. Um, we'll see how it works out. I might change it again. You seem unsure about that decision. I do, yeah. I'm, I'm honestly probably un unsure of like 90% of the decisions I make at first. Things reveal themselves to you, you know? Yeah, yeah. Are you so, trying to create a specific sequence up on that top feature? Yeah, up just above the lip, I need to um, create something that we, we haven't had here in a while, um, mm -hmm. which is like a, a traverse right starts over the lip and comes back down. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, I think, I think most of the time we, we tend to keep it simple with like, once you turn the lip, you're over the lip. Uh-huh. Um, so I think that's, that's something we, we like to try to do on a regular basis is like change up the way we use the features in the gym because those obviously never change. Mm -hmm. um, but the way we use them can change every week. Yes. The DBC setter recreation of the gym climber cover. I'll start a petition. How many signatures do we need? At least 10 signatures. <laughs> so I'm trying to line up kind of a flash and finishing sequence here. So you kind of like, you're going to wind up using some power trying to get through these opposing crimps. Um, and once you're on this rail, kind of like do a move to get your feet up. 
and then use this kind of like slopey, um, not super satisfying, not super like inspiring or confident, <laughs> kind of pull to get just enough compression to like stand up on a foot and set a heel in, okay. in this rail to hit a really nice finish hold over the whip. Um, so I want to try, try to create that in a way that keeping the grade in mind is like accessible for an M-plus climber but still appropriately challenging. Uh-huh. Um, and that's where good hold selection comes in. Um, so we'll see how well I do with that. This is the finish hold, yeah, and it's like, it's a nice beefy jug. It's like, it's it's a big one. The, the radius is really big, so you kind of have to like really wrap it um, mm -hmm. and palm it to, to stick it. Um, but I think at that angle, it'll be up on the slab portion of the wall. That'll be a, a nice, satisfying finish. Don't don't grab footholds until I've got all the handholds on the wall. Uh huh. Which TJ might roll his eyes at when he sees this. But <laughs> I always find that um, by the time I get all the moves up on the wall, the feet are just they don't, they don't work the way I thought they were going to. So uh -huh. I just wait till the end to, do, to pick them. Cool. I'm gonna choose probably all footholds from this same set because um, they come with like a good bit of variety. Like you got some that are in cut like this one, and some that are a little worse. So for that, the very first sequence where you establish on the wall, you're gonna kind of do like a hand heel match on that low left hand, but I want you to have a pretty decent right foot, but it's gonna also be around the right on the other side. So I'm gonna choose something pretty big that protrudes like this, so it'll give you a lot to like bite into with your right toe as you set the heel hook. But it'll also really it. force you to like squeeze around the right. Yeah, exactly. So how does the body position feel? It's a little bit too small a ball. Uh huh. Um, so I may shift up here a little bit. Okay. I also may make that a little bit better. This is the current right hand start hold. It is totally flat. So we're gonna find something with a bit more bite to it to make setting this foot better. It's not loads better, but just enough. So now I can kind of comfortably pull on and set like that. So now I'm gonna kind of climb the, visualize the boulder maybe more than a couple times as I place the feet just to kind of think about where a foot is necessary, where placing a foot would kind of force a certain sequence the way I want it to go. We'll see how that goes in the core running. One of the easy mistakes to make when you're placing feet to put something up you want to be used only as a foothold that's too grabbable. So like this guy, I almost just put here next to the start hold, start starting right here. Um, but you can see it's a fairly flat, crimpable edge. So I guarantee, you know, someone would come in tomorrow and, and crimp this as part of the sequence to break the boulder. So I'm gonna switch it out with that. I don't know, really uncomfortable. It's, I guess it's pinchable if you can pinch this with, with two fingers, like a thumb and one finger. But um, significantly less likely to be broken. But you don't want to, right? Yeah. yeah. Another thing I tend to do is really underestimate the height of a climber. So I'll put, I'll place feet, and then once I get on it, I realize like the foot is at least two or three teenups higher than, I, than it needs to be for comfort. So I try to adjust that. I, I don't always get it right, but you know, that's what forerunning is for. I think it's ready for forerunning, so we'll leave it at that. See how it goes. Yeah. Amazing. Oh, oh spinning. So we're realizing that because of the size of this hold right here at the whip, uh, the boulder is easily mantle, mantleable. Just made that word up, it's a word now. <laughs> so if you mantle, you can stand up on the next two and just kind of lay over and reach the finish hold. Super sketchy, we don't want people to do that and get hurt. So we are going to tweak the boulder in a different direction. Uh, Ty just demonstrated for us that the, the mantle onto this guy is totally still possible. While it doesn't leave you a real plausible way of getting to the finish hold, we want to make sure that that's just not an opportunity that presents itself to a climber. Um, just because it's sketchy and the last thing we want is for someone to, to get hurt trying a boulder. So we're going to try to shrink the profile of that just so it's a whole lot less plausible that someone would try to throw up a heel and mantle up onto the slab. You like it? So I don't love the way my forearm rushes this point. Mm. I stand up a lot of like this kind of movement. This for me I think is like one of the hardest 
hardest aspects of setting, where like you have a sequence that you like, and we want to try to save the sequence and pull it off while eliminating some like unsafe feature of it. Mm -hmm. um, so then coming back here and trying to find like the perfect hold, you know, sometimes it's really hard to find find the solution that you're looking for. Like this this low profile thing that'll play nicely with that lip. Okay. So Maybe we'll try we found that out. a winner. We have a backup plan if that doesn't work. So we are not going to try that hole. We're not. We're just going to fold this one. Um, it's been graciously offered to us. Thank you, sir. So we're going to try this one instead. Nice. Do you think uh, ditch the bottom the lower foot? No, I'm not. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Well, that, that wraps up the video then. Yeah. <laughs>